Pixar's Toy Story 3 is often celebrated as one of the greatest third entries in any franchise. However, the movie was almost completely different and wouldn't have been made by Pixar at all. As negotiations broke down between Pixar and Disney to continue making movies together, Disney, who owned the characters, began production on a version of the film that would have seen Buzz recalled to a factory in Taiwan after he began to malfunction. So let's dive in and find out what happened behind the scenes to go from that to the version we've come to know, as well as take a look at what could have been Toy Story 3. Animated movies are the heart of the Walt Disney Company, pumping life into every corner of their business. A successful animated film creates a ripple effect, spawning theme park rides, toys, clothing, merchandise, TV shows, video games, and more. In the mid-80s, Michael Eisner was brought in to revitalize Disney's struggling animation division, which he did by overseeing massive hits like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King, in a period known as the Disney Renaissance. Unfortunately, after a decade of success, Disney entered a 10-year slump, producing films like Atlantis Lost Empire and Treasure Planet that lost money and generated few profitable ancillary products. During that time, Pixar, led by Apple's Steve Jobs, quickly emerged as a more trusted brand in animation, consistently delivering hit after hit. Yet, despite Disney's own struggles, they still benefited by receiving half the profits from Pixar's films, thanks to their role as Pixar's distributor. When Disney first partnered with Pixar to create what would become the world's first computer animated feature, Toy Story, the agreement stipulated that Pixar would produce six original films while Disney would handle distribution, retain ownership of all of Pixar-created characters, and reserve the right to make sequels. So even though Disney's own films were floundering, they still had Pixar. As the two sides began negotiating an extension to their deal in 2003, right around when Finding Nemo came out and proved to be yet another monster hit for Pixar, Steve Jobs believed Pixar no longer needed Disney, and demanded that Pixar retain full ownership of its films and the characters in them moving forward, offering Disney only a fee to distribute them. Michael Eisner at Disney would object to this, and in an effort to negotiate a better deal, played the only card he had. He threatened to make sequels to Pixar movies without Pixar's involvement, feeling the audience wouldn't know the difference. Enraged and determined to find another distributor, Jobs publicly announced he was cutting off negotiations with Disney. Meanwhile, Disney went ahead and opened Circle 7 Animation, named after the street where its studio was located, to create sequels to Disney-owned Pixar films, which consisted of everything up to and including the film Cars, which had yet to come out. Upon hearing the news and worried about what Disney would do to the characters he and Pixar created, Toy Story director John Lasseter is alleged to have said, it's like you have these dear children, and you have to give them up to be adopted by convicted child molesters. The first sequel on Circle 7's slate was a follow-up to the jewel in Pixar's crown, Toy Story. And their version of the film opens with a gang learning about a new toy coming soon to stores. Dax Blaster of Star Command. Feeling a bit insecure, Buzz reenacts his falling with style trick from the first film, but his wings unexpectedly retract mid-flight, sending him crashing into a vacuum cleaner, which inadvertently turns on and sucks up a bunch of toys. After getting the situation under control and rescuing the toys from inside the vacuum, Woody confronts Buzz about his recurring malfunctions, pointing out the risks they pose to the other toys. But Buzz, in denial, dismisses Woody's concerns. Feeling they have no choice, the toys jump Buzz, toss him in a box, and ship him back to his manufacturer in Taiwan to get a new chip, which they believe will stop him from malfunctioning. However, later that day, the toys learn that Buzz Lightyear action figures are being recalled by their manufacturer following malfunctions that have led to a number of injuries, as the toy company plans to replace the defective toys free of charge. Terrified that Buzz is about to be lost forever, the toys decide to go rescue him and ship themselves to Taiwan, while Andy leaves for a week-long school field trip. Once the toys arrive in Taipei, the box they're in falls off the truck on its way to the factory. Before they can read the address on the box's label, it's destroyed by a passing truck. A string of mishaps leads them to a daycare at the top of Taipei's tallest tower, where they're roughly played with by a bunch of kids. After the kids leave for the day, the toys notice a giant buzz billboard out the window, which they realize is the factory. Unable to get to the elevators, the toys MacGyver a shopping cart, balloons, and a bubble machine, which they use to soar above Taipei and land at the factory. After Buzz arrives at the factory, he's placed on a conveyor belt that feeds into the Smasher, which pulverizes toys. Determined to escape, Buzz jumps off the conveyor, but is eventually caught and placed in a bin in the company's archive room, which contains one toy from each toy line that has been recalled over the years. It's here that he meets Cozy Rosie, who is designed to keep kids warm at night but kept catching on fire, and Jade, a Barbie-like doll whose knee can accidentally expose a sharp piece of metal like a switchblade. Buzz, after his experience with the Smasher, tells the toys that the company is destroying recalled toys instead of fixing them. Jade says this never would have happened if the 
company's founder, Mr. Kagoy, was still in charge. But he was sidelined for having lousy business sense and is now kept out of the loop. Buzz then hatches a plan to get a memo about the Spasher to Mr. Kagoy, as Buzz escapes the archive room with his new friends. The three end up in an office where they find Dax Blaster, the new toy set to replace Buzz. After hearing Buzz's plan, Dax pretends to idolize him, marveling at how Buzz is a top-selling toy in company history, and offers to help. After Buzz prepares the memo, Dax sends him through a pneumatic tube, claiming it'll go to Kagoy's office. But it actually sends them right onto the conveyor belt that feeds into the Smasher, as Dax is determined to stop Buzz and become the new top-selling toy in company history. As Woody and the rest of the gang enter the factory, they spot Buzz and his new friends trapped on the conveyor belt, and rush over to help, only for Woody to get pinned down on it too. Buzz manages to free himself, then helps Woody before the Smasher comes down and pulverizes Buzz's leg, as Buzz falls to the ground lifeless to the shock of the rest of the toys. The toys then rush Buzz into the parts department, fit him with a new leg, and open him up to replace his chip. But when he wakes up, he doesn't remember a thing. It's like he's a brand new Buzz Lightyear fresh out of the box. However, his memories come rushing back after a mention of Andy and his new friends discussing the feeling of being played with for the first time. As Woody and the rest of the toys prepare to leave, Buzz convinces them to delay their departure until they can get the memo to Kagoy to stop their recalled toys from being destroyed. Woody agrees, and after getting to Kagoy's office, they're found by him as Kagoy tells Buzz that he's his creator, and asks Buzz to speak to him, aware that he and the other toys are alive. After Buzz tells him about the Smasher, an infuriated Kagoy crashes the Dax Blaster release party, where he announces that the company will fix every broken toy. As Andy's toys prepare to return home in the factory shipping department, Dax powers up the Dax manufacturing line, creating countless Dax blasters, before leading an army of them to destroy Buzz. However, Buzz and the rest of Andy's toys are saved by an army of Buzz Lightyears, as both armies charge at each other like something out of Lord of the Rings. In a funny moment, a human janitor pops into the room, causing all of the toys to freeze and drop to the floor. The janitor, not wanting to clean up the enormous mess, quickly turns around and leaves, as the fight resumes. Eventually, Buzz manages just to knock Dax into a box, which Andy's toys seal shut and address to Sid's house before all of Andy's toys get in a box of their own and get shipped home. They arrive at Andy's house just as he returns home from his field trip, before Andy gets a letter from Buzz's manufacturer saying that Buzz needs to be recalled, as Woody and Buzz exchange a worried look, realizing they're going to have to go back to Taiwan. So what went wrong? While Tim Allen stated that he'd be willing to return to voice Buzz, Tom Hanks flat out refused unless the film was produced by Pixar. Additionally, not only did Jobs announce that Pixar was looking for a new distributor, but he also announced that he wouldn't negotiate with Disney as long as Eisner was still in charge, who alienated himself from Jobs after two incidents. First, he argued that Toy Story 2 didn't count towards Pixar's deal with Disney, as it was a sequel and not an original film, forcing Pixar to deliver another movie to Disney to fulfill their deal, which became Cars. And second, leading up to Finding Nemo's release, an email leaked from Eisner saying that he thought the movie wasn't any good, and would bomb, which would be a reality check for Pixar and put Disney in a better negotiating position. Eventually, Disney shareholders and the board of directors, outraged that Eisner had let Pixar slip away, forced Eisner to step down as CEO. He'd be replaced by Bob Iger, who was eager to do a deal after noticing that all of the characters in the Hong Kong Disneyland parade that were created in the last 10 years were Pixar's. Iger not only shared this revelation with Jobs, but after visiting the Pixar office and seeing what movies they had in the pipeline, like Ratatouille and WALL-E, put all his cards on the table and told Jobs that Disney didn't want to renew their distribution deal with Pixar, they wanted to acquire them completely. Shortly thereafter, after Circle 7 Animation was shut down, and its alternate version of Toy Story 3 was cancelled as Pixar started over from scratch. And while director Lee Unkrich would say that they didn't look at any of the work Circle 7 had done in order to not be influenced by it, there are a few similarities, whether coincidence or not, that made it into the final film. There's the daycare scene where the toys are roughly played with, there's Buzz being reset to his factory settings, and there's also Buzz and Woody stuck on the conveyor belt heading to their death via the Smasher. Regardless, Circle 7's version of the film feels more like a lighthearted side adventure for Andy's toys, while the final version offers a richer, more natural evolution of the story, showing what happens when owners outgrow their toys, as Andy heads off to college, leaving the toys to face an uncertain future and question whether they still have a purpose. Andrew Stanton, writer and director of Finding Nemo and WALL-E, would later say that Pixar was never fooled that Circle 7 wasn't the most expensive bargaining chip ever created, but they also knew that, bargaining chip or not, Disney would go through with it if they couldn't come to terms on a new deal with Pixar. Thanks for watching everybody, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Bullets and blockbusters for more great content.